Okay, so what's a plexus? Yeah, I'm not talking about a pink drink. I'm talking about a plexus in your spinal cord. Now we're talking about the brachial plexus. The plexus is a network or a tangle might be a better word, of lymphatic vessels, nerves, and veins. So when you hear healthcare providers refer to the brachial plexus, that's what they're talking about. It's a network or a tangle of lymphatic vessels, nerves, or veins. Okay, now CSF. Cerebral spinal fluid is constantly being produced by the choroid plexuses inside the ventricles of the brain. Now we've got a great picture for you here. And so always, if someone includes a picture, take the time to really look at it and study it. So what I want you to do now is to pause and look for the chloride plexus. You don't have to pause the video if you can find it right now, but I wanna make sure you put your finger on the chloride plexus before we go on. Okay, so link the concept of cerebral spinal fluid and choroid plexus together, because that's where the production of cerebral spinal fluid happens. Now, most of the cerebral spinal fluid will drain from the ventricles into the what? Sweet, the subarachnoid space around the brain and the spinal cord. So take your finger, find the subarachnoid space, and I want you to trace it all the way around the brain down to the spinal cord. So you're really using your fingers as a way to learn and imprint information into your own brains. Because anytime you use motion or touch, you're really helping your brain encode. So find the choroid plexus, boom. Find the subarachnoid space, trace it all the way around there. So we know that the CSF is produced in the choroid plexus inside the ventricles of the brain, and most of the cerebral spinal fluid drains from the ventricles into the subarachnoid space around the brain and spinal cord. Now you have a real picture in your mind of what that looks like. When we're talking about the subarachnoid space, that's in between those meninges that we've talked about, remember? Pia arachnoid dura, you've got it, good. So subarachnoid is just below sub the arachnoid layer. Now a little bit of it flows down that central canal, the spinal cord. Can you picture in your mind where that is? Yeah, that was that hole dead in the center or canal dead in the center of the spinal cord in the gray matter. Now, it constantly drains the dural sinuses through the arachnoid villi also. So predominantly the subarachnoid space is gonna get the most of it, but a little bit's gonna go down the central canal and it's also through the arachnoid villi. We talk about cerebral spinal fluid and the spinal cord. A layer of cerebral spinal fluid protects the spinal cord. Remember we talked about that. You had the cerebral spinal fluid and the fat. But I wanna hit it one more time. The cerebral spinal fluid protects the spinal cord in the subarachnoid space. That helps it from getting damaged by coming into contact with that interior side of the column. Okay, so that acts as a cushion. Just like the fat does, the cerebral spinal fluid also acts as a shock absorber and a cushion. Now let's take a look at the peripheral nervous system. Remember the central nervous system goes right down the dead center of your body. The peripheral nervous system are those nerves that connect the spinal cord to the rest of the parts of your body. It's called the peripheral nervous system. Now we use that word a lot, like peripheral IV, right? Versus a central line. So think of the nerves, peripheral nervous system is everything coming off the spinal cord out to the rest of the parts of your body, okay? So we'll talk about peripheral nervous system medications versus CNS medications. You'll see us use these terms, peripheral nervous system and central nervous system, a lot in healthcare.